Bhagavatam Canto 10. Canto 10, Prabhupada entitled it the Samam Bonum. And uh, we'll read chapter 12, which is entitled The Killing of the Demon Agasura. Hare Krishna. Yes. 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 Okay. And so um, this is uh, Canto 10. And uh, of course, this chapter also exists in Krishna book, but this is with the actual um, purports and verses and purports form that, that Prabhupada gave us. He came up with this in uh, 1977, rather late in 1977. So um, we'll just read along and see what comes up, what sort of discussion. Om Ganit Miranda Sikhananjana Shalakaya Chakshu Militanina Tasmai Shigori Namaha. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhupada Chinanda, Sri Vita Dana Shiva Sadi Guru Bhakti Vrinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prasthaya Putale Sri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine. Namaste Saraswati Devi Guru Bhakti Vrinda. Nirvishesha Sri Mate Prasthaya Desa Tarini. Hare Krishna. The Killing of the Demon Agasura. So first Prabhupada gives the chapter summary. This chapter describes in detail Krishna's pastime of killing Agasura. One day Krishna wanted to enjoy a picnic lunch within the forest, and therefore he went out early into the forest with the other cowherd boys, accompanied by their respective groups of calves. While they were enjoying their picnic, Agasura, the younger brother of Putana and Bakasura, appeared there desiring to kill Krishna and his companions. The demon who had been sent by Kamsa assumed the form of a python, expanding himself to a length of eight miles and the height of a mountain, his mouth seeming to extend from the surface of the earth to the heavenly planets. Having assumed this feature, Agasura lay on the road. Krishna's friends, the cowherd boys, thought that the demon's form was one of the beautiful spots of Vrindavan. Thus, they wanted to enter within the mouth of this gigantic python. The gigantic figure of the python became a subject for their sporting pleasure, and they began to laugh, confident that even if this figure were dangerous, Krishna was there to protect them. In this way, they proceeded toward the mouth of the gigantic figure. Krishna knew everything about Agasura, and therefore he wanted to forbid his friends to enter the demon's mouth. But in the meantime, all cowherd boys, along with their groups of calves, entered the mouth of that, of that gigantic figure. Krishna was waiting outside, and Agasura was waiting for Krishna, thinking that as soon as Krishna entered, he would close his mouth so that everyone would die. While waiting for Krishna, he refrained from swallowing the boys. In the meantime, Krishna was thinking of how to save the boys and kill Agasura. Thus he entered the mouth of the gigantic Asura, and when he, was, when he was within the demon's mouth, along with his friends, he expanded his body to such an extent that the Asura suffocated and died. After this, Krishna, by casting his nectarian glance upon his friends, brought them back to life, and with pleasure they all came out unhurt. Thus Krishna encouraged all the demigods, and they expressed their pleasure and happiness. For a crooked, sinful person, there is no scope for sayuji mukti, or becoming one with the effulgence of Krishna. But because the Supreme Personality of God had entered the body of Agasura, by his touch this demon got the opportunity to merge into the existence of the Brahman effulgence, and thus attain sayuji mukti. When this pastime was performed, Krishna was only five years old. One year later, when he was six years old, a 
and he stepped into the Purganda age. This pastime was disclosed to the inhabitants of Raja. Harikshit Maharaj inquired, why is it that this pastime was disclosed only after one year, and yet the, the inhabitants of Raja thought that it had, happened, it had been performed that very day? With this question, the 12th chapter ends. So it ends with a mysterious question. Why well, they heard it about a year later, but they thought it happened the same day. So that leads into the next chapter, which is uh, uh, Brahma Vimohan Leela, uh, the stealing of the boys and calves by Brahma. And that gets into time warps and time relativity. I'll mention, we have another uh, hard copy of the 10th Kanto there on the shelf, if either of you two want to get it. Okay, and you've got the online version. Okay. So text one reads, okay, what page? well, it's seven. the killing of Agasura. Yeah, we're at 536 now. Five, oh, no, well, that's in this volume. So it's a different volume. Okay. So it's just chap chapter 12, text one. Chapter 12, text one. So text one reads, Shri Shuka Uvacha Vachidvana Shayamano Dadad Prajat Pratta Samudaya Vayasya Patsapan Prabhudayan Changaravena Charuna Dinir Gatova Tapura Sarohari Shukadev Goswami continued, O King, one day Krishna decided to take his breakfast as a picnic in the forest. Having risen early in the morning, he blew his bugle made of horn and woke all the cowherd boys and calves with its beautiful sound. Then Krishna and the boys, keeping their respective groups of calves before them, proceeded from Rajagumi to the forest. <laughs> At that time, hundreds and thousands of cowherd boys came out of their respective homes in Brajabhumi and joined Krishna, keeping before them their hundreds and thousands of groups of calves. The boys were very beautiful and they were equipped with lunch bags, bugles, flutes, and sticks for controlling the calves. Pishnavatser asankater yoti kritya svavatsakhan charayantur vadilabir vijarus tatra tatra ha. Along with the cowherd boys and their own groups of calves, Krishna came out with an unlimited number of calves assembled. Then all the boys began to sport in the forest in a greatly playful spirit. Purport by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. In this verse, the words Krishna Bhatser Asankhita are significant. The word Asankhita means unlimited. Krishna's calves were unlimited. We may speak of hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, billions, trillions, tens of trillions, and so on. But when we go further to speak of numbers impossible for us to count, we are speaking of unlimited numbers. Such unlimited numbers are indicated here by the word asankhitai. Krishna is unlimited, his potency is unlimited, his cows and calves are unlimited, and his space is unlimited. Therefore, he is described in Bhagavad Gita as Parabrahman. The word Brahman means unlimited, and Krishna is the supreme unlimited, Parabrahman. Therefore, we should not consider the statements of this verse to be mythological. They are factual, but inconceivable. Krishna can accommodate an unlimited number of calves and an unlimited me measurement of space. This is neither mythological nor false. But if we study Krishna's potency with our limited knowledge, that potency will never be possible to understand. Atashri Krishna Namdi Nabhavigraim Indriya. That's from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.2.109. Our senses cannot perceive how he could keep an unlimited number of calves and cows and have unlimited space in which to do so. 
But this is answered in the Brihad Bhagavatamrita. Evam Prabhu Priyanam Cha Damnas Cha Samyasya Cha Adichin Cha Prabhavatat Achyakin Chin Avitvurgatam Trisantan Goswami in the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita states that since everything about Krishna is unlimited, nothing is impossible for him. It is in this sense that we have to understand this verse. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Just like a technical thing that I was wondering, like many times in, in the Bhagavatam, yeah. I guess all along the book, sometimes it puts like even longer verses than like one verse, like verse after verse after verse, and there is no like direct translation, like the previous verse in my version has a direct translation from the Bhakti Rasamitra symbol, Atashi Krishna no oh. <laughs> But this one, like proper is paraphrase yeah. translation, I guess, but sometimes there is no translation at all. Like the whole purport will be like something from the Goswamis. And I was wondering why Prabhupada like does that without like he wants us to go and translate it ourselves or like what's the I mean like if he quotes a Sanskrit verse like he does here from Bhakti Rasamitra Sindhu. Yeah, well, that one has a translation in my version, let's say, but from the Brihad would... Bhagavatam Rita, let's say. Oh. There's, there's no, like, translation in quotation. Well, it's, it seems to me uh, that uh, sometimes Prabhupada, he'll, he'll give, like, a, a, a direct translation, and sometimes he feels it's sufficient to paraphrase. Mm. And here he paraphrasing. Here he's paraphrasing mm. the Brihad Bhagavatam Rita. Rita. I don't think he's specifically wanting us to go to the Bhagavatam Rita to yeah. translate, although, it, you know, he's not discouraging that necessarily. Mm -hmm. But it's like this is complete, and so sometimes uh, he, he gives a paraphrase. That's my understanding, and then we just get the feel of the Sanskrit without an exact translation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes there is like nothing at all after. I can, I don't know a specific example, yeah. I don't remember, but. Yeah, then it's like really bewildering. Like, I don't know at all what Prabhupada means by quoting that. And it's like, it's not like something that I can even research because it's in some other books that Prabhupada didn't even translate. Yes. Yeah. You encounter that yourself, please, too. Yeah, yeah. And that's rare, but that, that, that happens. Mm -hmm. and, then, and then, you know, I think my thing with the Sanskrit is like, there's the meaning. Yeah. And then a lot of the meaning is in the field. Yeah. And I think, yeah, and I think that some, sometimes Prabhupada, he's including the Sanskrit for the vibration itself, mm -hmm. not necessarily for the uh, translated meaning. Because well, it has a strong poignancy in the, yeah. in, say, in the sake of reciting it alone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Question. There, we see there, there are some recordings where Prabhupada it's just he's just drilling his disciples on receiving the Sanskrit. Yes. Yeah. And then so sometimes I go, like, you know, good. and sometimes I'll emphasize that we're not trained in this pronunciation, just be sincere. But sometimes I'll go into it. I just heard one recently where he has a few of the disciples chant, and then one woman chant, chants it, and he, and he says, he says, she chants it nicer than all of you. Hmm. She, had the, she had the pronunciation, and they did, and then so... So, thank you. <laughs> you. You've heard that, yeah. 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 And, um, and yeah, so there are sometimes uh, Los Angeles, 1972, I believe, mm. he showed Panisha and he has them all. Oh, yeah. And then he'll, he'll correct them like that. And so, and, uh, and he'll, he'll emphasize that like each, each verse is so potent with spiritual Shakti. So sometimes in his purports, we get a direct translation, and sometimes it's there for the vibration of it. Mm. Thank you. All right, Krishna. And, and another thing that I sort of wanted to share, it's more like sort of like, I don't know, like a realization, an observation, yeah. I would say, how like Prophet's last book, uh, last book that he is translating ends with, like something which seems to be mythological for materialists. Uh -huh. And he, he points it out in this verse, yeah. like um, we should not consider the statement of this verse to be mythological. And that's how he started all his, like his books, like not the Srimad Bhagavatam, but the Bhagavad Gita in the West. He was battling 
I think Mahatma Gandhi was saying that it was all a myth and there was no place like to There go. was no battle of Kruksh. Yes. Yeah. It's just like it's yeah. a closure. It's, it's a, a complete circle. Yeah. yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, so, you know, I mean, the point stressed here is just like, these, but these aren't just like, these aren't books in an ordinary sense. So the, the Bhagavatam, the Vedas, of course, Prabhupada gave us Gita, Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita. That's, that's what we need. And a few others, Isha Upanishad and some of the Goswami's literatures. And so this is, this is the Vedas for us. And the Vedas describe, if you want to unlock my secrets, here's how to do it. Mm -hmm. And you, you become a disciple of a bona fide spiritual master who's a pure devotee of Krishna. Mm -hmm. that, that's what the Vedas clearly say, if you understand the Vedas. So like those who are scholars, so this is a mythology, of course, but symbolism, it's a, of course, there can also be symbolic meaning. Like also we can look at, what is my personal Kurukshetra? We can all look at or it. Or Yeah, wait, wait, yeah, where, 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 am, I, exactly. <laughs> where am I stepping into the mouth of Agasura? Where am I trusting Krishna? Where am I not trusting Krishna? Mm -hmm. So we can also look symbolically, fine, but not like it's only symbolism. No, this is history. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so yeah, so just like an example Kalpit gives, if a doctor gives instructions, okay, here's, um, yeah, here's how to take this medicine, and we just disregard it. Here, here's the medicine, here's the diet, here's what you should do with exercise, here's what you shouldn't do, and we disregard it, then we won't get, we actually might get harmful results, mm -hmm. or at best we'll get no results. And so, so the Vedas say, if you want to understand me, here it is. And it's, it's that devotional service, it's that submission, it's that humble submission. So scholars who don't have that, to use an example, I think Prabhupada says that Bhakti got that example from Bhakti Stan to Saraswati. Mm. It'll be like, we can argue about the taste of honey, mm. but it's like licking the outside of the jar or just, uh, well, I think it tastes this way. The way to open the jar, that's Bhakti Yoga. Mm. And that's Bhakti Yoga. And then, then, the incon then we get to realize the inconceivable. By engaging in bhakti yoga, then we get to realize the inconceivable. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's beyond us. So if it's beyond me, it's mythology. then it must be mythology. <laughs> right. and that, that's, of course, very accurate. Yes. Well, I didn't know that, that Gandhi said that. Yes, yeah. Yes. Um, Oh, but so it's various translators of Bhagavad Gita for different points. But Gandhi said, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no real battle of Kurukshetra, it's mythical. He, he quotes Dr. Radhakrishna saying, because uh, Radhakrishna is the one who, in the purport to uh, the Manmana Bhagavad Bhakti Manchati Ramana verse, he says, what Krishna says, Absorb your mind in me, surrender to me, uh, become my devotee. Radha Krishna says, uh, it is not Krishna to whom we need to surrender, it is the unborn within. So Prabhupada's quite fiery about that. Yeah. I mean, that that's, that's like a classic example of mental speculation. And where Krishna says very clearly to me. Yeah. And, and devote yourself to me. Yeah, and bow down, offer obeisances, offer everything to me. Offer everything to me. Um, and you will come to me. So Prabhupada gives those as two classic examples of word juggling and mental speculation. First verse, first verse of Bhagavad Gita, Dhritarashtra Uvachana Dharma Kshetra Kshetra. Samaveta Yutsava Amakan Pandavas Chaiva King Kurvata Sanjay. Vitarastra said, O oh, Sanjaya, what did my sons and the sons of Pandu do assembled there on the battlefield of Kurukshetra prepared to fight? So Prabhupada says, Where does it say that Kurukshetra is just mythological, just symbolic, just metaphorical? No, it's a real battle. So that's that's complete word juggling, mental speculation. Where does it say to the unborn within Krishna? No, Krishna says to me, the person. He's a person. They know, they know, they know where it was fought. They yeah. know where, uh, I don't know, I don't want 
I don't know that much about these things, but I know that in Eka Chakra, that that's where they, when Krishna threw the, the, the cartwheel, it landed in Eka Chakra. Mm. And uh, so they know all these details, you know, so it obviously points to the fact that it was like an actual event. It was, it was, it was a real battle, battle. and I, mean, I don't know, I mean, whatever the archaeology says, you know, I mean, archaeology supports the existence of Dwarka and Krug Shetra. And because so that's like, okay, like that's sort of scientific evidence, empirical evidence that can support Shabda Brahman. Okay, and it's important that Shabda Brahman for devotee is the ultimate pramana. Pramana means epistemology, means way to know. Pra prama pramana is way to know. And Pramaya is that which is known, the object of knowing. Um, and so, and so the Shabda Brahman, Bhagavatam, this is the ultimate this is the ultimate way to get knowledge about everything, and certainly about that which is apurashe, that which is beyond our mental conceptions. Now, our sense perception and our, let's call it, um, um, that uh, uh, inductive empirical method, that can support Shabda Brahma. But if there is an apparent contradiction, mm. then a devotee accepts Shabda Brahma. So, so it's true. I mean, like I think it was just not too like, twenty years ago, thirty years ago. They because Dwarka was always thought to be mythological, and then twenty, thirty years ago, they found this whole city under the sea outside of. Uh, yeah, what's the documentary? Yeah, right. It's it's amazing. It's uh, it's a, then they changed their whole theories. So there are other pramans. There are other epistemologies, such as sense perception, prajaksha, anumana, which is. Uh, inductive empirical science history and different things and they can support but they, they never supplant they never take the place of shakti Brahma. They, never they, they don't they don't replace like for for for, for, for so, so then so to the extent that we accept shakti Brahma, that's a sign of our advancement yes yeah, it, 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 st it, st it stands on its own it does it doesn't need archaeological evidence to support it. But at the same time, most people don't have trust in Bhagavatam. So if we can provide archaeological evidence, then they sort of think, oh, that's, that's what's described here. But we're describing evidence from, say, like, look, there's this ancient trust of the Ayurveda, and it describes medical procedures that weren't discovered until like, the mid 1900s in Western science. Well, that's, that's fascinating because they're supposed to just be primitive cavemen at that time. Mm -hmm. So then it, so then people start to question the, you know, the modern and postmodern paradigm and opens up a field of, of trust. Yeah, like uh, for like they said, like for example, in the Middle East, they, I don't know if what I'm saying is super clear, but they they're fighting over these details rather, rather than the essence of the scriptures, like the descriptions of where this place was, the, the uh, you know, um, I don't know. I don't really know that many details of it, but it seems like they're fighting over territory and stuff like that, where they're, they're not even necessarily super sure exactly where it took place and, and all these things. And all the sectarian stuff, Middle East is certainly one place for that. All over the world, but the Middle East is, Middle East is a hotbed of sectarian, sectarian bodily conception in the name of uh, God, in, in the name of spiritual life. And uh, I, yes, yes, so that's why we're, we're fortunate through Srila Prabhupada, we have a, we truly get to understand we're, we're not this body, we're eternal spirit soul, we're not Jew, we're not Arab, we're not black, white, not Greek, European, American. This all has to do with the vehicle. So that's that's a platform for God consciousness. We'll read a few more verses. Text four. Alaprabhava Savakana Sumana Picha Gatubi Kansha Kunja Manisvana Pushita Abhya Pushaya 
Although all these boys were already decorated by their mothers with ornaments of kacha, gunja, pearls, and gold, when they went into the forest, they further decorated themselves with fruits, green leaves, bunches of flowers, peacock feathers, and soft minerals. Mushnanto nyonya shikyadin yatan aracha chikshiku tatratyascha punarturat dasantascha punartadu. All the cowherd boys used to steal one another's lunch bags. When a boy came to understand that his bag had been taken away, the other boys would throw it farther away to a more distant place and those standing there would throw it still farther. When the proprietor of the bag became disappointed, the other boys would laugh, the proprietor would cry, and then the bag would be returned. <laughs> They're playing keep away? They're playing keep away, yeah. Well, that's, that's kind of it. Like if everything here is a shadow reflection of what exists in its original pure form in, in the spiritual, every idea of everything here because it exists in its in its pure form in Goloka Vrindavan in its original form. They're playing keep away. They're teasing. They're they're playing sports. <laughs> George, would you like to read the purport to that? Do you have that there? Um, I have. I only have the uh, translation because I'm using the Veda base here. Okay. So, uh, Ramachandra, would you like yeah. to read the book? Narayan is here, she wants to read Oh, Narayan, yeah, Narayan can read. Jai Shri Narayan. Hare Krishna. I didn't know who's there at the Bhakti Yoga Retreat. Narayan, would you like to read the purport? You're on mute. This kind of playing and stealing among boys still exists even in the material world because this kind of sporting pleasure is present in the spiritual world from which this idea of enjoyment emanates. Janmadi Asyayata. This same enjoyment is displayed by Krishna and his associates in the spiritual world, but there the enjoyment is eternal, whereas here on the material platform it is temporary. There the enjoyment is Brahman, whereas here the enjoyment is Jada. The Krishna consciousness movement is meant to train one is meant to train one how to transfer oneself from the jada to the brahman because human life is meant for this purpose atato brahma jigyasa Krishna comes down to teach us how we can enjoy with him on the spiritual platform in the spiritual world not only does he come but he personally displays his pastimes in vrindavan and attracts people to spiritual enjoyment Okay, Hare Krishna. I'm just noting this word jaded, and not that I am the word origin, but English, it's like the English word jaded, the English word jaded. Mm. And, uh, uh, so material enjoyment is jaded. It's actually dull. It's jaded. It's jaded. It's jaded. Yeah, jaded is just like no energy, deflated. And then th this is a, such a key point for all the principles, really. Oh, but just to read that again, this kind of playing and stealing among boys still exists even in the material world because this kind of sporting pleasure is present in the spiritual world from which this idea of enjoyment emanates. Mm -hmm. This is the core of personalism. That because the idea here, we, whatever propensities are here in the material consciousness realm, it's a distorted form. It's a shadow jaded form of what exists in full eternity, bliss, and cognizance in the spiritual realm. So we have a propensity to serve here. We have a propensity to seek happiness. We have a propensity to tease each other and to play sports. We have a propensity to play keep away. We have a propensity for knowledge. So here it might be like, okay, what's who, who won the game? How did how is the stock market doing? Mm -hmm. That's the soul's chit potency. It's the soul's propensity to seek and expand and deepen knowledge. Mm -hmm. And when we direct all those propensities in Krishna consciousness, then then our spiritual personality gets uncovered and fully 
is revealed and is awakened. Next, there's a series of verses, uh, five verses. So maybe uh, we can uh, we we can read them. It's a series of five verses. The last verse is a verse that Prabhupada quotes a lot in many contexts. So uh, this is text 7 to 11 of chapter 12. Did we read text 6? Oh, did we miss one? Yes. Oh, you're right, you're right. Thank you, Ron. That's where you take 6. Yadi Duram Gata Krishna Bhana Shopek Sinayatam Aham Puram Aham Puram Iti Samsvishya Vigre Sometimes Krishna would go to a somewhat distant place to see the beauty of the forest. Then all the other boys would run to accompany him, each one saying, I shall be the first to run and touch Krishna. I shall touch Krishna first. In this way, they enjoyed life by repeatedly touching Krishna. <laughs> Bhagir Upadishantascha Vityantascha Kapili Vikashata Kisabhan Arohantascha Tejuham Vikurantascha Taisakam Kavantascha Palashishu Sakam Vikir Vivanganta Sarita Sravasamputa Vihasanta Pratichaya Shabhantascha Pratisvanan Itam Satam Brahma Sukhano Bhujya Dasyam Gatanam Paritaivatenam Maya Shritanam Navadarakena Sakam Vijaru Krita Punya Punja All the boys would be differently engaged. Some boys blew their flutes and others blew bugles made of horn. Some imitated the buzzing of the bumblebees and others imitated the voice of the cuckoo. Some boys imitated flying birds by running after the bird shadows on the ground. Some imitated the beautiful movements and attractive postures of the swans. Some sat down with the duck sitting silently and others imitated the dancing of the peacocks. Some boys attracted young monkeys in the trees some jumped into the trees, imitating the monkeys. Some made faces as the monkeys were accustomed to do. And others jumped from one branch to another. Some boys went to the waterfalls and crossed over the river, jumping with the frogs. And when they saw their own reflections on the water, they would laugh. They would also condemn the sounds of their own echoes. In this way, all the coward boys used to play with Krishna who is the source of the Brahman effulgence for the jnanis, desiring to merge into that effulgence, who is the supreme personality of Godhead for devotees, who have accepted eternal servitorship, and who for ordinary persons is but another ordinary child. The cowherd boys, having accumulated the results of pious activities for many lives, were able to associate in this way with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. How can one explain their great fortune? Hare Krishna. You want to read? Sure. Record by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Puparthi Jai. As recommended by Shira Pokuswami, Tasmat Kenpi Upayena Mana Krishna Hide Shakya Bhakti Rasamitra Sindhu. Somehow or other, whether one thinks of Krishna as ordinary human child, as the source of the Brahman effulgence, as the origin of Paramatma, or as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one should concentrate one's full attention upon the lotus feet of Krishna. That is also the instruction of Bhagavad Gita. 
Sarva Dharma Parityaja Momikam Saranam Brajam. Srimad Bhagavatam is the easiest way of directly approaching Krishna. Ishvara Sakyo Kirti Abrahudya Tetra Vita Dhishushubhi Tatkashana. Uh, diverting even a little of one's attention towards Krishna and activities in Krishna consciousness immediately enables one to achieve the highest perfection of life. This is the purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement. And now this is like the second time Rampa kind of highlights the pur purpose of the Krishna consciousness movement. It's yeah, kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah. Lokas cha chaya chalato vidam The secret of success is unknown to people in general. And therefore, Sri Vyasadev, being compassionate towards the poor souls in this material world, especially in this age of Kali, has given us the Srimad Bhagavatam. Srimad Bhagavatam Purana Mamalana Myadishna Vajra for Vaishnavas who are somewhat advanced, or <laughs> Vaishnavas who are somewhat advanced, <laughs> who is that? Or who are fully aware of the glories and potencies of the Lord, Srimad Bhagavatam is a beloved Vedic literature. After all, we have to change this body. Tatha Dehantara Prakti. If we do not care about Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, we do not know what the next body will be. But if one adheres to these two books, Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, one is sure to obtain the association of Krishna in the next life. Therefore, distribution of Srimad Bhagavatam all over the world is a great welfare activity for theologians, philosophers, transcendentalists, and yogis, yoginam api sarvesham, as well as for people in general, janmalam para pumsham antenarayana smriti. If, if we can somehow or other remember Krishna, Narayana, at the end of life, our life will be successful. Jai. Krishna. At this point in our discussion, uh, anyone want to share any comments or ask any questions? I like this beloved Vedic literature, Prampa. It's the first time you hear it. I mean, I, don't, I read it, but I don't remember it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of affection for Srimad yeah. Bhagavatam there. Yeah. It's so intimate and personal. There's a, there's a, a, a special feel. For this, uh, for these chapters, the Prabhupada translated and purport there in the October, November, nineteen seventy-seven. Mm -hmm. There's a, um, there's some special vulnerability and affection. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a special sweetness. Mm -hmm. You would say Prabhupada, in a sense, is is aware of that he is soon to to finish his pastime of writing the books. I have a sense that that awareness comes through in these mm. purports. Mm. Back to George. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, two things struck me, two, two things I didn't know. One, they're only five years old and they're in charge of their own herds of cow or calves. That's amazing. I don't, I don't know many five-year-olds who are capable of that level of responsibility. So that's awesome. And the second thing is, did I hear correctly that Krishna had to revive all the cowherd boys because they had all perished along with the snake demon? Is that right? In revival? Yes. You're correct. Yes, we read that in the summary. And now as we go through the verses, we probably won't get to it today. You, you, you heard correct. Yes, he, he brought them back to life. And they, they, when they walked in, they thought, this is a cool place to play. But they also had a premonition that uh, there's something fishy here. Mm. Yeah, and this, but then but they went in like, well, anyhow, if something happens, Krishna, Krishna will take care of things. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> That's great. Thank you. So thanks for sharing that. Yes. Uh,
Bhakti Yoga Retreat. Um, I was just thinking about that reasoning. You know, the coward boys have a different situation and position than we do. Like they are, you know, they are associating with Krishna. But like I, w I have been thinking about that in, in our situation right now in the world. It seems that to me to have the same reasoning will be to burden Krishna. To burden Krishna? You mean like if we didn't, if, if in the name of, well, let's just trust Krishna, we didn't use our intelligence to like take care of ourselves? Yeah. Oh, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, it's okay. I can drive very fast if I do service for Krishna because Krishna is going to take care of me. Or, you know, I can do whatever I want because I'm a pure devotee of Krishna and Krishna will take care of me. And it seems that it's putting burden on Krishna. Yeah. Well, thanks for that. Yeah, because that gets into like, what's, what's the principle to follow and what's the detail not to imitate. And so, and so in, in, all, in, all, in practically all the pastimes of Krishna and his pure devotees, we want to look at what's the principle and the principle of that sublime trust. At the same time, we don't want to imitate the detail because, uh, yes, that Krishna gave us, uh, gave us our intelligence. And so we're, we're, we're meant to use our intelligence. And so the Calvary boys are in a particular situation this past time illustrates some, so we, we don't we don't want to imitate imitate from where we're at. We want to uh, be inspired by that uh, sublime one hundred percent unconditional absolute trust in Krishna of these Calvary boys, and we we don't want to imitate the details. Yeah, like if we see a big serpent, we are not going to enter the mouth of the serpent, for example. Let's say just an example. Right. At the same time, we can see like, okay, well, let, let, let's say there is a particular service mm. for Prabhupada's mission, yeah. particular service, because the cowboy service was to play keep away with Krishna, yeah. to, to have love journeys with Krishna. So say we have a particular service, and doing that service will require a risk and, and, and a stretch and, and getting out of our comfort zone and going to places where materially we're insecure. So therefore, okay, yeah, let me be like the coward boys and trust Krishna and his pure devotee, Srila Prabhupada, more deeply than I've ever trusted to give myself to that service with clear intention. I don't know how it's going to happen, but in co-creation with Krishna, this is what Krishna wants, I'm going to do this. So yeah, it's, it's not about foolishly like, you know, driving the car recklessly because Krishna will protect me. That's just idiocy. Thank you, Malani. Then I, I appreciate what you say, like as far as like the coward boy is five years old. So certainly, uh, okay, these are, these are special five-year-olds. Even also, also like, but, but even in terms of like, yeah, kind of like in, in Western culture, one doesn't really take responsibility till you're about 30 and have a PhD. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah right. <laughs> so like, <laughs> I, good, good, got some, good, got some letters out of that. No, really, not because now to compare, not because one thing is global production and it's inconceivable. But at the same time, we can approach. But I remember when I was living in the Arab villages, I was living in the Druze villages, and um, and uh, I would I would see at at two years old three years old, the little girls would have some responsibility to sweep. They would have some, and they would get it, and they would be joyful. they have a chore. Try to labor. Yeah, yeah, and it, 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 wouldn't, it wouldn't be like, um, ask, ask, the, ask the 14 year old to wash his plate. It's like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call Child Protective Services on you. This is abuse. Okay, so, so even in those villages that had more God consciousness than the, than the suburbs I grew up in, there was the consciousness that, yeah, by five, children had some responsibility and the children enjoyed it and they were happy. So we could share. In, in, uh, I lived in Amesh country yeah. and it was the same thing. Like I remember uh, being, you know, we were close with one family and they had many, many children. 
And I remember the two and a half or three year old was in charge of the eggs. So every day, the, the kids, very, very, like two and a half or three year old, our role was to go and pick up all the eggs from the chicken. And then the five year old, they, they definitely had more, more uh, substantial roles and responsibilities. Okay, so again, I mean, the main principle is everything in this world, including society, structure, desires, directions for aspirations, it's all, this is all a shadow, jaded reflection, jada, jaded reflection. Is it the same word, jada, like jada bara? Um, I guess, you know, because jad Bharat, he appeared, he was stupid. Okay. He appeared, no, he, was, he was, this is fifth canto of Bhagavatam, he was, he was quite a brilliant, um, pure devotee who, 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 who knew the philosophy very sharply and then gets yeah, Jad Bharat, he, he played like he was dull. Not, want, not wanting to engage in, in the world around him. I yes. Guess, but it's another way of looking at yeah. Yeah. Yes. So, yeah. So for, for me, this is so, so the per perfect f f philosophical construct. Because other philosophies, it's just like, okay, we can realize the illusion of matter and desires and all this whole world is, uh, is illusion. And there's truth to that. Okay, but then what's the positive reality? Only in the Bhagavatam do we have that. Only in the Bhagavatam do we have that. All right, maybe we'll read one more verse. <laughs> yeah, it's nectar. All right, so where, where are we? 12. We're in 12. Yat para pam surbo janma creature to dream dog ma be your beer up your love ya sa e laya jayisha yasa yam stita kim barnya te di stamato rupajoka sam. Dr. Keith, would you like to read translation and purport? Yeah. Uh, translation. Yogis may undergo severe austerities and penances for many births by practicing yama, niyama, asana, and pranayama, none of which are easily performed. Yet in due course of time, when these yogis attain the perfection of controlling the mind, they, are still, they will still be unable to taste even a particle of dust from the lowest feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. That will make somebody jaded. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, what then can we describe about the uh, great fortune of the inhabitants of uh, Vrajabhumi, Vrindavan, with whom uh, the Supreme Personality of God had personally lived and who saw the Lord's face, the Lord face to face? Purport. Uh, we can simply imagine the great fortune of the inhabitants of Vrindavan. It is possible to describe how after many, many births of pious activities, they have become so fortunate. So again, we, we can feel here Shukadev Goswami's ecstasy and his affection. He's like so much humbly appreciating these uh, coward boys and just how inconceivably special these uh, like, because we can think about the yogis or, or the great s scholars, philosophers, and and the coward boys. He's appreciating them as just like trillions of times greater. That they're 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 playing keep away with Krishna, and they're climbing on Krishna's back and wrestling. They're playing with Krishna, so come be punya punja, and. A verse in Brahma Samita Pantasta Koti Sattabhatsara Sampragam Nyo Bayur Bayur Pantasta Koti Sattabhatsara Sampragam Nyo Bayur Vanasa Muni Pungavanam So Piasti Yakra Parasim Nyavi Chintya Tatve Govinda Mari Kusham Tama Ambajami that, that, that describes how yogis who are sincerely endeavoring for uh, trillions of lifetimes and jnanis who speculate to, to differentiate what is not the truth 
Maybe if they're sincere after millions of lives, they'll get a speck of the, they'll, 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 they'll glimpse a ray from the effulgence of the toenail of Krishna. And these coward boys are playing with Krishna. So Shukadeva Goswami, you can feel his ecstasy and you can feel Prabhupada's ecstasy in, in, in getting a window into these pastimes. Okay, so text 13 reads, Atta Namabya Patan Mahasuras Tesham Sukam Pidana Vikshanakshama Nichanya Antar Yajuji Yuti to be Pita Viter Hat Yamarai Patikshate. My dear Maharaj Parikshit, thereafter there appeared a great demon named Agasura, whose death was being awaited even by the demigods. The demigods drank nectar every day, but still they feared this great demon and awaited his death. This demon could not tolerate the transcendental pleasure being enjoyed in the forest by the cowherd boys. Purport by Srila Prabhupada. One may ask how Krishna's pastimes could be interrupted by a demon. Srila Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur answers this question by saying that although the transcendental pleasure being enjoyed but the coward boys could not be stopped unless they stopped the transcendental pleasure of their various activities. They could not eat their lunch. Therefore, at lunchtime, Agasura appeared by the arrangement of Yoga Maya so that for the time being, they could stop their activities and take lunch. Changing varieties are the mother of enjoyment. The coward boys would continuously play, then stop, and then again enjoy in a different way. Therefore, every day a demon would come and interrupt their sporting pastimes. The demon would be killed and then the boys would engage again in their transcendental pastimes. So, the Bhagavatam is so vast and complete. At the same time, we can say it's the partial biography of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right? We hear about a few dozen demons but here it says every day there would be at least one. Hmm. Okay, so we're just we're just getting highlights. Similarly, it's described in the first canto of Bhagavatam that the the number of incarnations of Krishna hmm. are more numerous than the waves in the sea. Hmm. So again, that gets into inconceivable numbers. Hmm. More numerous than the waves. In the sea. So in the Bhagavatam, in the Vedas, we hear about maybe two to twenty-five, thirty of the incarnations, mm-hmm. highlights. Ramachandra, Narsini Dei, Baraha Dei, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Um, we hear about 25 or so. Mm-hmm. so but they're, they're more so similarly with the demons. We, mm-hmm. we hear of, of a few major ones. In some circles, you, you only hear of one vague description of God that only belongs to your one tradition. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That, that's it. And so, that's why, like, if, if we look, uh, yeah, was, yes, yesterday morning, there was a very inspiring class uh, about Yadah, 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 Masya, Glenya, Bhavali, Marada, Pichanam, Adam, Sitanam, Adam, Shitam, Yam, and focusing in on Prabhupada and Jesus, it was Easter, Jesus' disappearance. So, you know, so in the teachings of Christianity, there's some idea of the kingdom of God, but there's not much concreteness. I mean, Jesus gave them what they could handle. So, so, so if we look, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, there's some idea of like some heavenly kingdom, but it's, uh, it's, not, it's not a fraction of a fraction of what we get in the Bhagavatam. And even the Anshaitanya Charitamrita, I will say. But, and even what we get in the Bhagavatam, Anshaitanya Charitamrita, that's just a very partial biography of the unlimited, inconceivable. Supreme Personality of God. Yeah, one time we were, uh, I was living in, I'm kind of, anyway, uh, I was living in Red Deer and living with an, a nice Christian. He was quite, quite sincere, like, you know, he's a good guy. And, uh, uh, but he was still a little standoffish. We had to be careful what we said around him and that. And, and I was trying to preach some little things over the time. And then uh, we, we, I was just about to move, 
it was like the last day I was there and he took everybody over pizza. And uh, one of the guys that I talked a little bit with him about spiritual things and stuff and, and uh, he just, at one point, uh, he, he said, so what, what do you guys think is it heaven is? And I don't know, it was more, uh, I don't know how I, why I came up with this thing, but it was just uh, really on the spot. I said, everything here is made out of dead matter and everything there is made out of eternal spiritual energy. And just that, I could see they were like the guy, the, the guy that, uh, that was arranged the thing, my landlord, he was like really active in the community, one of the big main people in the community. He would, and I saw everybody was just like stunned, like they just shocked. And he was like this, didn't want to show it, but it was just, um, yeah. To it show opened up, it opened, opened up a whole, a whole realm. Even, just, yeah, just even just that little just detail, detail that opened up the whole realm. Like, what is God's yeah. uh, favorite color? Or who's his best friend? You know, yeah. like, what's his favorite food? What, what do they, what does he do every day? What does he look like? You know, what does he wear? Like, you know, and that's just one even little speck of does, does, does that come in? yeah everything spiritual yeah. Prabhupada would sometimes say like yeah here we 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 we, could, we, we know the name of god's girlfriend and the, and the instruments he likes to play and his we have his address mm-hmm. and his phone number she might bug with tom ki jai i have a question oh <laughs> question sorry <laughs> Well, then he likes when I'm doing that, right? <laughs> but I always wonder about Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur. Yes. Like how he gets all these things, like the behind the scenes. Like mm-hmm. it's so interesting. He always comes, like, is it the super soul? Or because I guess Prabhupada, that's how he would give the purports, right? He would have Baladevidya Musam's commentary yeah. and Vishwanath Chakravati. He had 10 commentaries. 10, you were oh, sorry. I think there were seven major and another few. Oh boy, had, I'm not underestimating Prabhupada. Oh yeah, but Prabhupada had like, uh, it's kind of like in the, like when you get the Talmud, or the, or the Torah, you get all these commentaries. So I think there's like seven or ten Vaishnav commentators. Oh, Sri, okay. Sri Dar Swami, Sri Dar, oh, right. Vishwanath Chakravarti. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I don't know into the mind and heart of Vishwanath Chakravarti, but you know, these are the heat. He has insight, just like, okay, at the beginning of the program, we sing, Jayo Jaya Bhar Chande Roti Kesho So the last line is, Bhakti Tibi Nora Deke Bhar Sampada. So it's trend that this is the, this is how Bhakti Vinod envisions this beautiful Bharati Sampada. So it's not just like, oh, that's his imagination. No, he's he's experiencing those spiritual pastimes with Sri Vastakur, Bhakti Vinod. Similarly, Rupa Goswami, he has many literatures like Vidagda Madhava, Lalita Madhava, the, 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 these dramas. Mm. So my understanding is he's fully entered into the pastimes. Wow. So he's, he's gonna hit, so his purport, Rupa Goswami, Santana mm. Goswami, Vishnu Chakrabarti, their, their purports expand on the Bhagavatam and then they become Bhagavatam. Wow. Just, just like the whole Bhagavatam, it's it's Vyasadeva's, it's it's Vyasadeva's vision of Goloka Vrindavan. It's fun, but it, 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 it probably quotes that verse here, Janus Loka Sintan Tavi Vamos Chak Fesat Vatasamito. That that Bhakti Yogi Namanasi Vyasadeva went to a trance of Bhakti and he had a vision of Krishna and he came out with the Bhagavatam. Mm-hmm. So his his vision he has a he has a direct vision, a direct experience, not just vision like sight. He's a direct experience of reality. Yeah. Yes. Wow. And Shukadeva Goswami, Atma Ramastamunayo, Nirgunti Apyu, Krama Kravante, Takimati, Itambuto, Gunohari. So he was a realized Brahm, Brahmavadi. And then he too, through so hearing Bhagavatam, got that direct experience of, of, of the spiritual reality. And the direct experience of the highest spiritual reality is not the undifferentiated oneness, it's these pastimes. Mm-hmm. So that's my understanding. Similar with the Goswami, similar with the Vishwana Chakri Varti Thakur, mm-hmm. they're on that platform. Is it kind of like, like, um, oh my God, 
and what an embarrassment. I forgot the name of Sanjay, like Sanjay had the Mystic yeah, Television. Yeah, the proper to call it, yeah. Mystic, <laughs> tele, Mystic <laughs> Television in his heart. Zoom, Zoom, Zoom in the heart. It's, that, it's like, yeah, so Sanjay wasn't imagining the discussion on Kurukshetra. He, 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 he was fully present there. Mm. He, he, had, he had a direct experience of that reality of the conversation between Krishna and Arjuna, although he wasn't physically there. You know, in, in, in the body we think of. So that's my understanding. It's the same with the Goswami, it's the same with all the Acharya, it's the same with Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that. Thank you. Jai Prabhupada. Jai Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai, Jai. 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 Jai.